Hey guys, Matthew here from the MMAT YouTube channel, giving you my take on the Browning Buckmark, Carbine. That's right, Browning took their deservingly popular Buckmark pistol, added a shoulder stock, a front stock, and an 18-inch barrel to make what many consider one of the best 22 pistol carbines currently on the market. That's right, I said carbine. That's because this is a combine, not a combine. The buckmark is available with either a tapered sporter barrel or a bull barrel. They are both 18 inches long and the sporter barrel also comes with fiber optic sights. The receiver is equipped with a scope reel that will accept standard weaver or picatinny accessories. Its overall length is just over 33 inches and it weighs just under 4.5 pounds. It does feature all of the same controls as the Buckmark pistol, however they're not as accessible as I'd like them to be. As you can see it's darn near impossible to reach the magazine release and the slide lock is a definite stretch. The safety works alright though. Most shooters are going to have to actually take their hand from the firing position, reach around in order to activate the magazine release. The carbine, just like the pistol, is semi-automatic which means the shooter will have to be aware that this slide is going to reciprocate after each shot. You're going to want to keep your head back with this one. They put a red dot here to remind you, although I think if you get hit in the nose just once with this slide, you're not going to forget it again. To keep the shooter's head back where it belongs, the length of pull, that is the distance from the trigger to the back of the buttstock, is a little longer than normal at just over 15 inches. Despite this though, it's still very comfortable to shoulder and shoot. Like the pistol, it does offer a last shot slide hold open, and the slide is open on both sides allowing nice easy access for cleaning and for clearing malfunctions. However, the downside to this is that it allows unburnt powder and gases to blow back into the shooter's face making safety glasses absolutely mandatory. The Buckmark pistols have had a long tradition of being very reliable and very accurate. Does the carbine keep this tradition alive? Let's head out to the range and find out. Well I was hoping for a little better weather conditions today. It's just below freezing and the wind is starting to pick up a little bit, gusting upwards of 30 kilometers an hour. But uh, I guess we can use that to see if the gun will continue to operate in less than ideal conditions. The slide locks open on the last shot. The magazine ejects every time. I have had no malfunctions so far. The gun just works. Dud. You can see I tried to fire that one a couple of times. That's definitely a dud. That is not the gun's fault. Alright, well, you can see I've mounted a scope on here. Let's see how we can do accuracy wise. Alright, so these targets are 50 yards from the shooting bench. As you can see here, this is my initial group. Not great. Three in one hole, but then we've got two, one high, one low. Really bad. Next we've got, it, it looks like, I mean that's, that's just over a half inch, four of those shots. And then one of them opens the group up to about an inch and a half. So, not bad, but could be better. Over here we've got five shots, sorry, we've got four shots in a half inch, less than half inch, and then one opening it up. Down here we have three shots in a half inch, two opening it up. And then down here we have four shots, uh, just under, I'd say three quarters of an inch, and then uh, we've got one high. Now it looks like I was wrong here, it looks like that's two shots in one hole. This one down here belongs to that group. So that was my first group. Um, we can call that maybe uh, shooting jitters or, you know, I, I don't know what else to call that. That's, that's just terrible. Over here, a couple more groups. Again, we're looking at uh, just under an inch. Looking just over an inch, I would say. Over an inch here as well. Uh, down here, I don't know what happened. We're way off. And then uh, again here, we've got four inside of an inch or so and then one way down. So 
I'd say the rifle's accurate enough. I mean, we are at 50 yards. Most semi-auto rifles are only capable of producing two MOA groups. That's two inches at 100 yards, or as we're seeing here, about an inch at 50. Given the price of the rifle though, I was expecting it to be a little bit better. We do have to consider the fact that I was using bulk pack ammo and that might account for some of those flyers. And also, reports from other Buckmark owners indicate that their rifle's accuracy seemed to improve with time as they put more rounds downrange. Either way though, for a semi-auto 22 rifle, it's definitely within the accuracy parameters that one would expect. And the good news is, it might even get better. So overall, I found the Browning Buckmark carbine to be well built, reliable, and definitely accurate enough. The only downsides are the complete lack of access to the controls and the fact that you sometimes get a bit of gas blowback in the face. But these are fairly insignificant compared to the amount of fun that I have every time I shoot this handy little carbine. Well that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed watching. We'll catch you next time.